I do whenever else I get home. Yo, my name is Chris Strader. My name is Uriah Solis. Together we are the secret sauce. Secret sauce. Secret sauce. Secret sauce. Sauce secret. I say secret sauce in Spanish. Ooh, hell. Oh, I'm about to embarrass all of my people. Something especial. I don't know how to say sauce. Anyways. Don't hurt me, Grandma. Don't spank me. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded terrible. Together, we are the secret sauce. Uh, we are both musicians. Uh, I'm based in Houston, Texas right now. Nashville. Nashville, Tennessee. Ten Cashville, Tennessee. We've been uh, homies since we were both 12 years old. Grew up at a church together in Houston. Mm -hmm. And I've uh, been playing music together since we were 12 years old, and now we get to tour and everything together, so it's really awesome. We are currently on the Hope Encounter Tour, which is uh, ran by Mr. Danny Goki himself. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, also course. with Torn Wells and Riley Clemens, who we are both yeah. playing for. We both play for Torn Wells, um, but on this tour, we are also playing for Riley Clemens, who's the opening artist. She's a really dope uh, new up-and-coming artist based in Nashville, Tennessee. She's dope. Check out her album on link iTunes. down below. Yeah, I got the link down there. Inti Ways, tell them what we're doing, bro. So what we thought we'd kind of do is document our lives on the road uh, for this tour um, and share it with people who care. This is our second tour together, and but each of our third tour, we've done one tour separate, or, yeah, separately. But uh, this is our second one together, and... We always have a good time. The This group that we're with is great. And <clears throat> it's just, I, I enjoy the lifestyle. We both enjoy the lifestyle, kind of, Still. you know, new cities all the time and just playing music and having fun with your friends. And so we just thought we'd kind of bring that out, share you, share with you guys what we do. Yeah, so today, um, sorry for those of you who are not like into instruments and gear. Today's video, it's not really for you, but yeah. we got other stuff that's coming later. We These got are other. For, this is for the nerds. Yeah, this is for the gear nerds. Today we're gonna be doing rig rundowns with the musicians that we're playing with on this tour. So you'll be able to see all the gear that they use and hear them talk about their setup and all the different things that they use. So if you want to look at a certain instrument or even a certain person, uh, we put time codes in the bottom or in the description below, you can go ahead and skip to that person if you're not really interested in hearing what Uriah's doing, but you want to hear your I'm boy. Doing, I'm doing the most on this tour, y'all. You want to hear your boy, you want to check out, you know, the drum tones, know what I'm saying? Go ahead and skip, you know, just check out the time code down below, and we're going to make it pop. It's Yamaha drums with black heads. Wow, That's all it is. guy, give it all away. <laughs> Anyways, all right, without further ado. I'm done. We're good. Let's get right into it, y'all. We'll see you soon. What's up guys? Back with Louie. Killing it on keys with us on this tour. Um, introduce yourself to everyone and uh, let us know what you're working with. What's up guys? My name is Louie. I live in Nashville. I've been playing keys professionally since right out of high school, which I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was because then you're going to be able to tell how old I am. Uh, just giving you a little tour of my rig for the Torn Wells uh, set on the Hope Encounter Tour. So as a main board, I'm using the Nord Stage 2 EX. And then as an auxiliary board, I'm using a Moog Subsequent 37. Both of these are sending and receiving uh, MIDI changes at the same time through USB. And also this is sending MIDI information out to a module that I have over here, the Nord Rack 2, which essentially is the rack version of a Nord Lead 2 sense. Uh, really, really cool sounding synth. As my audio interface, I'm using a Motu Ultralight MK3. Uh, it is on, but the LED panel is kind of messed up, so, but it is on. And then I'm hosting all my uh, virtual synths in the main stage. Uh, makes it a little easier to change patches on the fly. I normally use Ableton, but in Ableton, I wasn't able to figure out a way to get Ableton to recognize patch changes. You could come up with a really cool pun there. But Ableton wasn't able to. Okay, cool. <laughs> thanks, guys. So now um, the way that I control everything is literally just on the actual Nord. Um, everything from patch changes to volumes, everything's all pretty much automated on this guy. Um, anytime I push a button for a patch, 
it changes the collection of patches in main stage, which also has certain MIDI channels that are sending back MIDI changes to the subsequent 37 and also back through the Nord to the Nord rack. Um, trying to figure out if there's anything that I'm missing. I have this guy here uh, that I use as a little sub mixer for some of the stuff inside of main stage. Very rarely do I actually adjust anything on here. It's just more of a uh, fail safe kind of thing. If something goes wrong in main stage, I'm able to cut the volume off on this guy. Uh, yeah, and then other than that, uh, as far as virtual synths, I'm using Omnisphere, uh, another synth called VPS Avenger by a company called uh, Vengeance Audio. And then I'm also using some stuff in Contact and another Juno emulation by Tau. And effects, I'm using Sound Toys, uh, a little bit of Lexicon Verbs here and there. And then here, the way I have it set up, I have one keyboard here on screen for the Nord, and I have another keyboard up here for the subsequent 37. There are certain patches that I get to where I'm layering actual audio from the subsequent 37 and uh, stuff from Omnisphere. And then I have all the songs that we're doing, plus a couple other ones just to have um, interchangeable songs. And yeah, so anytime that I change a patch over here, everything gets adjusted. Uh, also, to have a little bit more flexibility, I'm sending, I believe it's six individual channels to front of house. So one and two is stereo audio from the Nord, three and four is stereo audio from the Motu on the laptop, and then five and six is stereo audio from the subsequent 37 along with whatever is layered with it in main stage. I'm running audio out of here into the Motu and I'm setting it as an audio channel in main stage so that I'm able to apply effects to process stuff on here at delays, at uh, courses, reverbs, whatever you want on that. Uh, I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. From here, uh, the piano is going to output one and two, and then you can assign in here the synth section to go to separate outputs, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, the outputs from the synth are going to three and four, which I'm also submixing kind of in the Motu interface. So basically, anything audio related is going into my MIDI interface, and from my my interface, they get. Um, they get separated accordingly to that. Uh, expression pedal is automating certain volume changes. Um, it kind of works as a crossfade for me. So when I'm changing certain sounds, it kind of crossfades the level between those two sounds. And I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything else. I think that's it. Chris, you got any questions for me? Nah, man. Good? I think so. Cool. Preach a trade bruh. So guys, Uriah here, um, playing bass and guitar on the Hope Encounter tour for the two opening acts, Riley Clemens and Torn Wells. So far it's been a great time. And uh, I guess let's just get started with what I'm doing on bass. So if you come down here, uh, I got my little baby board. Um, wireless system, preamp, uh, the uh, BB preamp from Exotic. It's like a distortion, I use it once. Um, and then this is a bass booster, it's always on, it's kind of like my EQ. And then um, the sub mixer is uh, obviously bringing my electric bass, my live bass, it's um, bringing that and my synth bass into the same output, so it's only, you know, one DI going to sound. I don't know if I explained that correctly, but they're both plugged into there and that's one channel coming out. So it's easy for them to keep it at the same level. So then moving up to synth bass, I got a Moog Sub Fatty. Um, I got it. Uh, shout out to Dad. Thanks for this. Um, and let me get out the way. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm just using a couple, only two sounds uh, in two, just two sounds for the whole set for both people. Um, shout out to Louie for helping me. He's really good with sounds. And I could not explain anything of the way he did. So he helped me with get sounds and uh, He's a beast. Um, I'll pay him later just because I said that. Um, but yeah, pretty sick little little machine there. And then um, for the actual live bass, I got this right here. This is my 72 jazz bass, uh, four string. I don't know why I put it on, but I'm playing this. 
I need to change the string soon. But this is pretty sick. It's pretty limited. Um, down here, it's got the... Uh, says boss right here apparently boss is the guy who made a really limited run of bases back in the 70s and uh I, it's either 500 or 5000 i could be wrong but it's very limited numbers and i have one of them and unfortunately r.i.p he passed away before they asked him to do a second run so there's literally been only one run of these bases um it's pretty cool this was a gift shout out uncle tommy um and then that's all for base. Pretty simple. Um, there's nothing else to that. And then for, for guitar, I only play guitar for Torrin's set. I'm playing bass for Riley's and then bass and guitar for Torrin. I got my telly right here. Also a gift. It's custom. Um, I don't know why I keep putting these on, but uh, it's a really awesome telly with P90 pickups in it and a bird's eye maple neck, which is uh, makes it for a really interesting sounding telly. You can kind of get your good classic telly tones out of it but then it's got some more grid because of the humbuckers which is great also it's really cool am i getting you <laughs> kidding um so different angles obviously different colors the holographic is really cool and the signature right here is uh it's chris Gaines, which is garth brooks's alter ego for um one or two records i believe he did a tour as chris Gaines, and this was the tour gift to everyone on the tour i obviously was not on the tour but um, the person who was on it got one of these and he gave it to me as a gift. So I've been very blessed. Shout out again, Uncle T, Uncle Tom. Um, we can cut this out, but if you wanna, this is a very special guitar, very limited. Right there at the top of the headstock says 18 of 21. So very special. I don't know, it might be priceless. I don't know, to me it is. Then, so coming out the uh, the mothership pedal board for uh, for what I'm using this time is uh, pretty simple. Um, I got an AB box. Uh, one is for my guitar. The other one coming out is for Torin. He plays guitar on one of the songs, and I'm letting him run through my rig. So um, his guitar, you know, we just come and take it, and he plugs it up up there, and then. After he's done, I switch it back to mine. So what we have here, we got um, starting in the chain would be the wireless unit here, so I can do my dance moves um, out in front with Torin. And then uh, there to the AB box and to my buffer. Buffer, barely even are. Um, then from there, we go compressor, compressing, compressor from Exotic and the EP booster from Exotic. Then um, start my overdrives after that, which would be the Friedman Dirt, Dirty Shirley. This is, uh, if you haven't heard of Friedman, great company, makes great gear and mainly amps. So this Dirty Shirley is a copy of their amp. Um, so it's their amp in a box. So sounds awesome. I use that for one song for the really heavy, I have it set kind of heavy. Um, going into this uh, Silver Archer by J Rocket. That's your, uh, that's a clone clone. One of the best ones, one of the best clones. And obviously you get a great bang for a buck because I'm not going to spend clon money. So that's great. Uh, into one of the older Morning Glories by JHS. JHS is Glory Days. Morning Glory Days, I should say. Just kidding. Um, this is like the second version or the first version. So really dope. Uh, this probably won't ever come off my board. And then last but not least, the Timmy. This is kind of like an always on pedal. I keep it uh, kind of as an EQ. So that's really dope. Then from there, going into my course, which is a original boss chorus, which is pretty tight. Sounds great. And then volume pedal delay, and then probably my favorite reverb on the market right now, this Empress reverb. It's uh, very user friendly for live stuff because there's no, uh, there's no screen. So you don't have to be scrolling through menus. It's pretty easy to use, so, uh, and it sounds awesome. And now, um, the last thing, I think that they mic, my amp. Um, I'm running through a Dr. Z Therapy. It's a 35 watt, uh, two 10 inch speakers in it. Um, and uh, I believe the tubes are 6L6. Well, not I believe. The tubes are 6L6. Um, it's, I just got this this summer. It's freaking sounds awesome. Um, and the really cool thing about it, I got a great deal. Shout out to my homie uh, Jared. Um, he's the man. He's also a great guitar player. And um, 
it was really cool because it came with the like the live-in case so makes it makes touring very easy just put the two lids back on and we're good to go I think sounds amazing and uh, it's got it's very loud so I'm uh, very lucky to have that and that's pretty much it it's pretty simple and uh, I think it's pretty simple considering I'm playing two instruments so yeah thanks y'all yeah. Hey, I'm Parker. I'm uh, 21 years old. I've been playing guitar for 10 years and uh, I'm out on the road right now with Riley Clemens. And yeah, show you what I got here. Uh, this is my main guitar. It's a PRS uh, 20th anniversary 2005. Uh, it's got the, the bird inlays a little different. It's got the wave pattern here. Uh, same as Miguel, Danny uh, Goki's guitar player. So it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it's got the coil tap here, which I love. So this is my favorite. Use it for just about everything. My uh, backup electric, you gotta go with uh, the Strat, nothing crazy. I love the road-worn finish. Uh, it's not the legit thing, it's factory done, but I love it, looks super cool. Got uh, some aftermarket locking tuners on it that are pretty cool. And that's pretty, it. pretty much it for that guy. This is my Martin, this is my only acoustic I have. And I love it, again, nothing too. Nothing too crazy, part of the X series, but hey, it sounds good, so that's all that matters. So let me show you my uh, my pedals here. Again, pretty straight. I got two uh, chains going on right here. This is my acoustic. I just go straight from the TE2. Just put a little reverb on it here at the end. And everything else is pretty straight. I'm going from the Polytune straight into my Dunlop volume pedal. And I'll run everything else after. Uh, first going into my compressor. Uh, this uh, compressor advertises the compressor for people who don't like compressors. So I pretty much just use it as a volume boost for when I split to the coil tap just to uh, turn the volume up a bit, make it a little fat, tighten it up. This is my main drive here, my BB preamp, uh, custom shop. Love it, super versatile. Uh, pretty much always have it on, rarely take it off. And then next I'm going into my sweet T here. So this has got the JHS 808 circuit here. It's kind of my second level drive. And then I got the Angry Charlie on the left here. It's what I use for all my gritty stuff, most of my lead stuff, probably one of my uh, favorite sounds. Next, I'm just going into my modulator here, uh, TC Electronic. Don't use this guy a whole lot, but it's again, it's pretty versatile. And if you see on here, it's got different chorus, flanger, phaser, tremolo. Uh, you can put a couple on at a time if you want, or uh, or just the one. So. Whenever you need something a little weird, a little out there, I'll flip that guy on. And then uh, last, my uh, my favorite, couldn't go without these guys, uh, timeline and into the big sky. Uh, you already know what it is. Super, super common pedals, super awesome. The preset uh, features are, are everything. Just to have everything saved with, with everything you can need. They are money. So yeah, let me take you back to my here. And uh, I'm rocking the Mesa Boogie Lone Star, 100 watt all tube. Uh, I got it flipped down to 50 watts though. Got it from my dentist. Shout out to Dr. Hendrix. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. Super fat, has a great low end. So yeah, it works uh, super well, especially when uh, you're getting ready to rip. So. From We're here with NASA. Riley Clemens. She's going to do a rig rundown of her uh, her rig her wardrobe. Um. Okay. Hi. I'm Riley Clemens. I am an opener on this tour. Really? Oh, if you want to. Maya. What's up, y'all? I'm Tim. Uh, I've been playing guitar for 17 years, 16 years. Uh, but. Um, I'll start by describing this guy right here. Um, this is my acoustic that I'm using for one song. Uh, the song Hills and Valleys. It's a Gibson J45 um, with a leopard skin strap. It's very important that you get the vibe right. Yep, there it is. This, this strap was given to me. I have no idea where I got it. I found it, I think. Um, and my electric one electric that I'm using. It's a Duesenberg Star Player TV. Three tone, 
sunburst. It's got a P90 in the neck, humbucker in the bridge, and a huge gash where I fell off stage. Um, we can talk about that later. You can you can hit me up on Instagram. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> uh, I love this guitar. This is the only guitar I use um, all night. So, um, yep. And then I have a Sure wireless. Uh, this is a great great wireless unit to use. That's that. From my pedal board. This little guy here fits in my backpack, which is something I really uh, prioritize traveling, just keeping things nice and tight, nice and light. Uh, so I have a green compressor, box of rock, overdrive, the H9, which has all kinds of sounds on it. It's an H9 maxed. So it has every even type pedal on there. Um, dual fusion, overdrive, tuner and, then, and this is my volume pedal okay and then the main piece of my rig is this guy right here the Kemper profiling amp so that actually provides about 99.9% .9 of the sounds that I have that I use on the road so and then that talks to the the foot switch right here the, the profiler remote so that I can Get to my sounds nice and quick. Um, so you can see I have multiple banks, like a, a bank for each song. So this is the intro of the set, and then the first song, and then I just scroll through the sounds, and then on to the next song, on to the next song, on to the next song, just like that. Um, and I guess we'll go look at my amp. This guy, this is the only amp that I have actually that I really use on the road. This is a car slant 6V. It's got two separate channels. Uh, it's got like a fender clean, uh, like, a, like a fender blackface channel and that's the channel that I use and then it has an overdrive channel over here. Um, that sounds great, although I don't, I don't use it as much. Um, amazing sounding amp, really does the fender thing really well. Um, I love it. I have, I have no complaints whatsoever about the sand. So um, that pretty much completes my rig. Um, you're welcome to hit me up on Instagram at Tim Dillon, T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N if you have any questions. Um, one thing I forgot, <clears throat> my 1964 quad drivers. I love this company. I've, I've used three different models of their ears and I've, I've loved all of them. So Highly recommend those. Um, but yeah, just hit me, hit me up on Instagram if you have any questions. I'd love to answer any of those and just interact with you in, in any way that I can. All right, see y'all later. Yo, what's up everybody? Chris Strada here, playing drums for Riley Clemens and Torin Wells on the Hope Encounter Tour. Also MDing and running tracks as well, so I'll show you that rig a little later. Actually, yes. So I'm gonna show you my rig. I'm gonna start with the tracks rig, come over here. So first, we run all of our tracks in Ableton. So I have it kind of set up how I prefer it. Um, real simple, you know, just got everything laid out in groups and songs and stuff like that. I'm using this Akai Professional LPK 25. I have all the songs labeled and I have my play button right here. This is to turn on and off the click if needed. And uh, just have some little trigger stuff ready for me. I'm going, I'm using a, a wired pack because I really don't need to be wireless on here. So use this, go straight to in here. My ears go in here. The interface I'm using is the iConnectivity Play Audio 12. It a, has a built-in redundant system. It's a really dope. You can run two computers at the same time. And if one of them fails, the other one automatically kicks on. Uh, so it's really dope. So I got that going into the eight channel DI, radial DI, and I'm actually running 10 lines. We got stereo aux tracks, which is mainly all the key stuff. We got loop tracks right here, stereo as well. Stereo background vocals, click bass, a separate guitar line as well up here. And then we also have a sympty line.
for those of you who know what that is. Basically, SMPTE line is sending uh, a signal to the lighting board so all the tracks can be lined up with the board um, for the lighting. When I press play, it automatically does all the uh, lighting cues and everything. So that's that. Got the talk back mic here. Can't go wrong with an SM58. Has a switch on it so I can turn on and off when I need to. Uh, let's move into the drum set. Uh, always got to have a nice rocking sock, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I like to sit pretty high, and a lot of people say it's not good, but I like to sit pretty high. Anyways, let's start with the simple things. I use Promark sticks. I like 2B and 5B. I'm using 5B on this run just to uh, not get my hands cramped using those thicker sticks every night. So I'm also using Remo drum heads on my snare over here. I'll come back to what the snare is, but on this 13 inch snare, I have a Remo Emperor Ebony. Sounds really, really nice. Nice and like cracky and like poppy. Uh, on this snare, this is my main snare. I have the Remo Ambassador coated. It's like a, just like the go-to standard for snare drums. Sounds awesome. Has a nice like warm snap to it as well. Uh, I went with the Remo Pinstripe Ebony heads on the toms because I saw uh, Sticks Taylor, if you, know, if you know who that is. I saw him use that on the Justin Bieber gig and his tom sounded amazing. So I was like, I'm gonna just go ahead and cop those. And these drums do sound good. Uh, you'll be able to hear it a little later. Um, on the kick drum, I'm using the Remo Power Stroke. Uh, yeah, just, just the Remo Power Stroke. I think, like, I believe that's a three. So yeah, it just, it just, it's punching right now. I still gotta get it dialed in a little bit more, but it feels great. So from there, symbols I'm using are all Zildjian. Uh, I really won't go into, actually, yes, I will. All right, so yeah, uh, shout out to Zildjian. If y'all guys wanna, um, Send me some symbols or something, it'd be awesome. Uh, I'm using K Custom Special Dry Hats, 14 inch right here. These are really like, they're just really versatile and they work really well for what I'm playing. Uh, up here, have the A Custom Projection Crash, 19 inch. Shout out to Logan Wilkinson for letting me cop that. Uh, got a K Custom 8 inch splash right here. On this splash, I have a K Custom Hybrid Splash, 9 inch. So they, these two together sound really cool. Over here, I have the custom, K-Custom Hybrid Ride, it's a 20 inch. I really love the hybrid cymbals. Uh, they just work well for what I need. It has like a really nice bell, but it's also super crashable, but not like too pingy. Super dope. This is my newest love. I have a, uh, it's a K-Custom Sweet Crash. It's a 20 inch, this is Zildjian's latest line. And I found this at a random music shop uh, in some random state somewhere and I had to get it because it was like super dope. Over here, I'm using, this is my stack, I have an 8 custom EFX, EFX. Uh, this is an 18 inch. Uh, I have, so this is on top, but on the bottom, I'm giving you all my secrets, I have a 18 inch Oriental China Trash symbol and this thing by itself sounds amazing, but together stacked, it sounds even better. So that's that. As far as the drums, I'm using all Yamaha shells. Uh, this kit is a special kit to me. Uh, I actually grew up playing this kit at Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas, which was my church for seven years. And then I was able to get it through some friends and different things. So this kit was uh, originally maroon color, but I got it wrapped in white. So it's a Birch Custom Absolute and it sounds amazing. Uh, 22 inch kick, uh, 10, 12, and I'm using a 16 inch tom. I left a 14 at home because I didn't really need it. Uh, over here, my main snare that I'm using is a recording custom. Uh, is this a recording custom? Yeah, steel snare, I think. I can't remember what this is. What the heck is this? Yeah, recording custom. I'm tripping, sorry about that guys. Recording custom thing sounds amazing, super versatile. The other thing I use out here is the uh, Big Fat Snare Drum. I just throw this on for a few songs. I use this the whole time during Riley's set because Riley's more pop stuff. And it just I just need a big, fatter sound snare-wise. So I don't want to 
have like all these snares out here. So I just throw this on and then, so for those of you who don't know what it does, it dampens the snare. So, got that sound. Totally different sound. It dampens it and then kind of gives it a lower tone. So I use this uh, for all a rally set and then I use it for a few songs on Torrent set as well that requires that more deeper sound. Boom. And over here, this guy, I became fond of the snare when I was like in middle school because Abel Orta Jr. had the snare. It's a Yamaha Musashi uh, Japanese snare and the thing just, it just cranks. You pop, you can turn it up, crank it up really high and it just has a lot of pop to it. And it sounds really, really good. I love it. Coming over here to the drum pad, I'm using also Yamaha, the DTX Multi 12. And I have several sounds up here. Uh, up here, I'm using like a boom. There's a tambourine right here. Uh, snaps, claps, two claps right here. Some 808 snares, an 808 drop, chimes, uh, some other random accessory stuff. Uh, it's really versatile. It comes with a really dope program that you can use on your iPad to control all the sounds and volumes and stuff. So that's what I do. And it's awesome. I love it. Uh, all Yamaha hardware, uh, the latest uh, version of all the hardware. You come around here, this is my, my also, uh, my most recent purchase is the Yamaha Hex Rex 2. I love this thing so much. As you can see, everything is attached to the rack, including the mic stands. Uh, so it makes it really, really easy to move the whole kit and have everything in the same place. Everything is memory locked. Uh, it just makes everything super easy to set up and tear down every day. And uh, everything is super sturdy. Nothing's ever moving on me. Everything just feels great. Everything's in the same place. So it's really awesome. I have, as I said, I have all the mic stands as well um, locked into these. So it's really cool with that. I really love this bass drum head right here. It's a uh, mirror head. I don't even know what you really call it, but it just makes for like a cool look on stage and uh, kind of trips everybody out when they see it. You know, kind of flex your shoe game, know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much it. I love, I love this whole kit. I love the way it's sounding out here. Um, it's super comfortable and I'm super grateful to uh, one day soon endorse these companies. Remo, Promart, Zildjian, Yamaha. I'm also using, uh, last but not least, shout out to 1964 Ears. These are the, um, these are the eight drivers. Uh, shout out to Roman at 1964. He hooked everybody up in the band with Ears. Um, so shout out to these guys. Uh, they sound amazing and they're doing exactly what I need them to do out here on the road. So I think that's pretty much it. Oh, I did like upbeats. Oops. All right, do one. All right, we back. What's up, you guys? Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. If you got this far, thank you. I know it was a kind of a lengthy video, so we appreciate you sticking with us and rocking with us. And we just wanted to, um, again, say that we're excited to kind of start this new series. Um, as the secret sauce, we think, uh, I think we're going to have a pretty good time. Uh, any questions that you have, we'd love to maybe, uh, get some conversations going in the comments. We're kind of looking for a little bit of some interaction with, with some people. So anything you want to add, I don't know what that was. Uh, anything you guys want to add in there would be great. And also, as everyone says, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share and follow and to oh also we're posting that i'm going to be posting this video on my new channel as well i have no followers at the moment no subscribers at the moment so <laughs> help your boy out yeah don't forget to also follow us on instagram at strader s-t-r-a-w-d-e-r -E and at uriah zeph that's u-r-i-a-h-z-e-p-h thank you guys for watching and we'll tune back in when we got some more footage for y'all we out. Do the thing. Do the thing. Do the thing.
Oh, <laughs> almost <laughs> fell. Still do the thing. You are not. Let's go. Still.